few weeks ago, we released hot mic video of Donald Trump taken during a break in his 2015 deposition in the federal lawsuit accusing him and Trump University of fraud. Now we have the full video of the entire deposition, which was originally sealed under court order during the 2016 campaign. This is video Trump didn't want you to see. Here are nine revealing clips of Trump doing what he often does, running away from or distorting the truth. You can watch how he refuses to call false statements false and how he says he can't remember saying that he had one of the world's best memories. For my full analysis of each clip, visit motherjones.com slash deposition. Now, do you feel that your attention to details has kept your memory sharp? No, my memory's good. Well, you've described it as being better than good, right? Yeah, it's good. It's safe. I have a good memory. Well, you've described it as being one of the all-time great memories, right? I have a good memory. Well, <laughs> do you remember? Is that your question? <laughs> do, you, do you remember saying that you have one of the all-time great memories? Yeah. And, and do you believe that's true? Do you have one of the all-time great a, memories? I have a very good memory, yes. Do you believe you have one of the best memories in the world? That I can't tell you. I can't talk for other people, but I have a good memory. Well, you've, st you've stated, though, that you have one of the best memories in the world. I don't know. Did I use those ex that expression? Yes. Where? Could I see? I can, I can play a video of you of a reporter no, reporting. No, did, I, did I say I have a great memory or one of the best in the world? One of the best in the world. Is what the, is what the reporter reported you as saying? No, no, I mean, I don't, I don't remember that. Okay. okay. As, as good as my memory is, I don't remember that. But I have a, right. I have a good memory. So you don't remember saying you have one of the best memories? I, I don't remember that. Okay. I, I have. I know. I remember you telling me, but uh, I don't know that I said it. Do you recall saying you have one of the all-time great memories? I think that was the expression I used. And you stand behind it. Yeah, I have a great memory. I have a very good memory. What's the question, Chase? The question is: This individual I'm saying here. Can you tell me whether this person is student, live events instructor, or neither? Um, Johnny Harris. Too many years. M. Gosselin. Too many years. Mike Dubin. It sounds very familiar. Uh, names, the names sound familiar, just too many years. Darren Liebman. Its name sounds familiar, but it's too many years. Johnny Birkins. I don't, I don't know. Johnny Horton. Too many years. Tim Voss. Again, uh, you can go through this whole list, and I'm sure you'd like to. So you can take us for a long time, but uh, these are some of those names sound familiar to me. But it's too many years ago. Chris Goss. You going to go through a whole list of names? You're the one who said, "Give me a list." You want to show it to You're me? Right. You want to show it to me? I'm going through the names. If you want, what, supposing you show it to me, I can save you a lot of time. <laughs> I'll go through the list. We left off with Chris Goss. I, I just instructor. Uh, again, some of these names sound, neither. Some of these names sound familiar to me, but it's too many years ago. Sound familiar? As in, might have been an instructor, might have it been a student, been, could have been, well, could have been neither, could have been no, would have been more likely instructors. I would have known the instructors much more so than the students. We we have, we'll have a lot of students testifying, but we have, uh, but as far as that list is concerned, um, I would I would have the names familiar. It's just too. Well, when you long say ago. that list, we don't have any documents. I don't even know what list right. I'm reading from. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, the lawyer is, I'm just is reading, reading from a piece oh, of paper. Shouldn't you not, have a document? Before? Excuse me, that has not been put in front of you. The record oh. will reflect that, and and the testimony will, will be evaluated in light of his refusal to let you see a list or represent what the list means. So just answer his questions, and we'll take it from there. Next question, please. Ken Berry. Too many years. James Webb. I don't remember the names. Don't remember the name. James too Casper. Too many years. Too many years. Mike Casper. Too many years. Terry Martin. Some of the names, by the way, sound familiar, but too many years to know who they are. Paul Lucas. Same thing. Terry Lucas. Same answer. Mike Peterson. Same answer. Troy Peterson. Same answer. Chris Gillen. Same answer. Steve Gilpin. Same answer. Scott Miller. Same answer. Steve Miller. We're going to do this all day? Is it the same answer? Same answer. Derek McNulty. Same answer. Rick McNally. How many more do you have? 
How many more names do you have? Mr. Trump, you're the one who wants to get through this quickly. Just answer the questions and we'll get through it quickly. You're not, you're not going to get anything through quickly. You don't want to get anything through quickly. Same answer. Gary Stanton. Same answer. Johnny Birkins. Same answer. Gerald Martin. Same answer. Chris LaFrance. Same answer. Steve Goff. Same answer. James Webb. Same answer to your harassment questions. Chris Lombardo. Same answer to your harassment questions. Keith Holly. Same answer. Keith Sperry. Same answer. Howard Bell. Same answer. Howard Holler. Same answer. Bob Serafin. Same answer. Bob Steen. Same answer. Jerry Moore. Same answer. Joe Lahore. Same answer. Mike. Same answer. Mike Same answer. Rick McNally. Same answer. Mike Cass. Same answer. Tim Gorsman. Same answer. Jeff Nolan. Same answer. Steve Gilpin. Same answer. James Christ. Same answer. Alex Christ. Same answer. Mike Weber. Same answer. Don Sexton. Same answer. Um, well, I know, I know the name, well, but same answer. It's too long ago. Do you After Don Sexton, could, could you repeat the question just so he yes. has it in mind? Don Sexton. I, I, I heard the question. Do you know whether he's a, whether that individual is a live events instructor, I, I, a student, or neither? I remember the name, but it, I'd have to, it's just many years ago. I'd have to check the facts. Gary Stanton. Same answer. Gary Stanton. Same answer. I'm sorry. Gary Stanton. And then Gary Sturgeon, S-T-U-R-G-E-O-N. So construct for me a scenario. And we did have a lot of very good instructors. I mean, you can always find somebody that maybe is not so good or a couple. Can you, they can you name for me one good live events instructor? Uh, I don't know Ask the instructors. Answer. Do you know a single good live events instructor? Ask an answer. Do you? Am I supposed to answer that? You've answered it. Many All times I can say is, again. it's many years ago. Flip to the next page, which is 10292. You refer uh, in about the one third of the way down. I'm going to give you two hours of access to one of my amazing instructors. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so the same date. These are the, this is, uh, Different date, different location, okay. different ad. Again, you don't have any idea what the qualifications were of those instructors, correct? I just said get good people. I wanted good people. And you, I, I told you, I saw resumes. You but, wanted good people, but you have no idea what the actual qualifications were, correct? I hear we had some great instructors. But I'm asking you, do you have any personal knowledge yeah. as to what the qualifications yeah. they were? they had to be were? good. I wanted good instructors. I know what you wanted. What I'm asking you is, do you have any personal knowledge that they were, in fact, good? I've heard good things. Well, my only knowledge is this. I've heard good things. And this is when John Carl is asking you about your past praise for uh, certain individuals. The first one he mentions is your past praise of Jeb, Jeb Bush, of whom you said he is exactly the kind of political leader this country needs now. When, when was this? What year was this? This is this year. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This, is, this interview is this year. The, the quote he's referring to is from years past. From years past. Yeah, well, that's right. Okay. He is exactly the kind of political leader this country needs now, and we very much need in the future. But when was the quote? How many years ago? We'll get to that. He's bright, <laughs> tough, and principled. Okay. Uh, and Mr. Carl goes on to say, and not just Jeb Bush. Of Hillary Clinton, you said, just in 2012. Can I ask you a question? What's What's the relevance of this? I'll get to it. She well, don't terrific, answer any questions. She's a terrific this. person, works hard, and I think she does a good this job. Is, this is, I'm out. Yeah. George Pataki, you said, uh, was the most underrated guy in American politics. Uh, Rick Perry, you said, is a very effective governor. Texas is like, lucky to have him. And then Mr. Carolina say, now you've declared, you've declared Hillary the worst secretary of state ever, Pataki the worst governor of New York ever, and you said Rick Perry's too dumb maybe to be in the debate. And your response to all that was a very simple answer to that. I was a businessman all my life. I've made a tremendous fortune. 
I had to deal with politicians and I would contribute to them and I would deal with them. And certainly I'm not going to say bad things about people because I needed their support to get projects done. I needed their support for lots of things, or I may have needed their support, put another way. I mean, you're not going to say horrible things and then go in a year later and say, listen, can I have your support for this project or this development or this business? So I say nice about almost everybody, and I contributed to people because I was a smart businessman. I, I've built a tremendous company, and I did that based on relationships. Is that just response you gave an accurate explanation for why you had said nice things about these folks in the past and now are expressing different views? I don't think I should have to answer this. I I'm think this is so far I'm off base. It's just a filibuster. That's what you do. It's not a filibuster. It's a filibuster. No. It's what, what, what does this have to do with what you're doing what, here? What I'm getting at is you said in your explanation here that you had a, a business reason for complimenting these folks in the past, correct? I'm instructing. I, I don't think I, I should respond to out. this guy. Time out. I'm instructing just you to hold answer. I don't think it has anything remotely to do with the case. Please. You, Let's just go to court and you, get you, this case. You, I'm dying to go to court on this case. Mr. Trump, you've yeah. referenced a number of times your belief that students had praise for Trump University, correct? You can answer that question. Yeah, they have great praise for Trump University. And you have yourself praised people in the past because you felt that was necessary to get their help, correct? Supposed to answer that question? No, you don't have to answer. If, if it has anything to do with Exhibit 489, you don't, you're not allowed to answer it. Whether it has to do with 489 or not, you have given praise to people in the past because you thought you might need their help, correct? If, if it doesn't have to do with this, it's a different question, I think. Unrelated to Exhibit 489, if you can answer the question, the question is vague and ambiguous. Have you given praise to people in the past and because you felt you might need their help for a deal in the future. And it's incomplete. Yeah. Uh, I think that generally I like to be as positive about people as I can. And have Generally, you, I like And to. have you given praise for that reason, even when you didn't sincerely believe the praise? Um, the question is vague, ambiguous, and yeah, overbroad. I mean, do you have a specific instance? And I'll yeah, I do. <laughs> Not this. <laughs> No, it's ridiculous how this... It's, but, these are your words, Mr. Okay. Trump. But so, it's, it's a whole different world. So, it's all right, get a ruling from the judge. It's all right. He'll get a ruling from the judge. It's, it's fine. It's you right. asked me for a specific instance. Case, I'm and, going and, to give you one. If you don't need a specific instance, no, then just please, answer the give question. Me an, give me an instance that pertains to what we're talking about. What I'm asking you is, have you in the past been praised to someone because you may need their help for a deal, he, 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 even though you did not sincerely believe the praise you gave them. First of all, that's totally different from our lawsuit, okay? That's a totally different thing. These people have given tremendous praise, many of them, have given tremendous praise for the course. So that's totally different from what you're talking about. Um, and almost everyone has signed a document, et cetera, et cetera. I so look forward to having this case go to court. I, I've been waiting for it for a long time. Well, you're delaying this deposition. No, I'm so I'm not, I don't mind delaying question. it. I'm just telling you, I, I look forward to answer. having it in court. No, no. And I look yeah, forward to having a nice long answer. trial. No I look forward to having a nice long trial. Excuse me. I look so look forward to having answer this question. No, Dan, the question was, it was supposed to Mr. Trump, did you, have you in the past given praise to someone because you thought you may need their help in business later on, even though you didn't sincerely believe the praise do, you were giving them. Do any situations come to mind? If so, no situation comes to mind. No. So, and you won't answer the question as to pertaining to Jeb Bush. Well, I won't politics. allow him to answer the question. Politics. You will not. I've, I've instructed. And you will not him. answer the question as to Hillary Clinton. Correct. And you will not answer the question as to George Pataki. Correct. And you will not answer the question as to Rick Perry. Correct. So you don't know if you've done that in the past? Uh, you'd have to give me a specific instance. I mean, I, you're asking Other me than the four you gave no, no, this you'd, week? No, no, you'd have to give, you would have to give me a specific instance. Not this. I'm giving you a specific having instance. To well, do with business, having to anything. do with business. Give me the business. Give me a business instance. Mr. Trump, you referred to Mr. Pataki as the most underrated guy in American politics. Time out. 
correct? Please uh, don't answer the okay. question I've instructed you not to answer. Fine. Please move on, Jason. Referencing your book, The America We Deserve, Mr. Trump, uh, does Exhibit 490 appear to be uh, an accurate copy of portions of that book? Yes. Okay. Um, if you look at the, you, you, among other things in this book, you take the education industry to task, correct? I take what? And the education industry to task, correct? Well, I wrote it uh, 16 years ago, so I, you know, I, I, I talk about education, I think, but I wrote it a long time ago. Okay, if you look at the second page of the exhibit itself, which is... <coughs> page two? Uh, yes. It's page 156 of the e-book version of this. Okay. Uh, you, you, wrote, you wrote this book, right? Yeah, I did. The education industry is delivering less for more money and claiming no for, no ground has been lost. It's fraud, pure and simple. Yeah. So would you agree that when educators deliver less than promised for more money and claim they're doing something great, it's fraud, pure and simple? Question calls for improper opinion, testimony, incomplete hypo hypothetical. It lacks foundation. Vague and ambiguous. You can answer. Subject to those objections. Um, the education of living less well. Let the record reflect that, um, again, you presented him with um, page yeah. 156, and I, I'd really no have, context for I'd that I'd really statement. rather, I'd like to read, you know, the entire chapter before I answer that question. Do you have so, the rest so of it? Without, uh, without reading the entire chapter of your own book, you can't answer the question as to whether or not when educators deliver less than promised for more money and claim they're doing something great, it's fraud, pure and simple? You can answer that question, whether or not you need to read the whole uh, chapter in order uh, to answer the question. I, I would say it's, it's, no, it's not fraud. Okay, it's not fraud. So this statement in your, in your book you think is not accurate? It's, it's uh, trying to get a point across. So it's not accurate? It's not accurate, yeah. It's trying to get a point across. Using an inaccurate... Using an I, I, it's in, well, it's trying to get a point across. I'm trying to education is very important to me. I'm trying to get a point across. And, and the again, point I'm, you're trying to get across is what? That education has gotten out of control, and that uh, ideally something has to be done about it. So the, the fact that it was fraud, pure and simple, was just thrown in there? No, it's just I'm trying to make a point, and it's, it's not fraud, but it's, it's I'm trying to make a point as strongly as possible. Up to you. I'm going to direct your attention. Exhibit 493 uh, contains excerpts of Mr. Sexton's testimony in this case, the Cohen case. If you could, please turn to page 261 of his testimony. Okay. And I'll represent to you that... This quest, these questions are referring to that same script that you had in your hand, which is Exhibit 492. Okay. And the question I posed to him was, you knew when you were sending the script. Where is that? You knew I'm sorry. Page you, oh, I see. Number six. Okay. Yes, there you go. Line six. You knew when you were sending the script that you were sending it to individuals that had not, in fact, had dinner with Mr. Trump, correct? Answer. That's correct. And you knew, question, and you knew that Mr. Trump had not said anything to them over dinner, correct? Answer, that's correct. Sending a script to instructors that contains uh, a misrepresentation about having had dinner with you and discussed real estate with you over dinner, do you believe, Mr. Trump, that set a good example or a bad example for the instructors? Well, I think it's hyperbole, probably, and, you know, I mean, I think it's uh, not particularly important, but I think it's hyperbole. I and object I, to the question is calling for improper opinion testimony that is vague and ambiguous. So is that the kind of thing you consider to be an innocent exaggeration? That's the same, same objections. Yeah, I'd say that's an innocent exaggeration, yes. So uh, if the instructors are trying to basically convince the students that they have a close relationship with you, um, and that's that's part of the pitch is that they have such a close relationship with you that you actually have dinner and talk real estate with them. 
Uh, that's you believe is innocent exaggeration. Same objections. I would say it's hyperbole. You know, uh, I would really say it's. Um, yeah, I think that's probably the word for it. A lot and of people it, say they met with me and they were with me and all of this stuff. I mean, I have it all the time. I think it's hyperbole. But, but you, in, in this context of talking to prospective students, people who might pay to be instructed by these folks, you consider that to be uh, innocent know, exaggeration? Same objections. I don't know. People love the courses. So I just don't know. Uh, but, but I would say it's innocent hyperbole. Yeah. And uh, hyperbole in this context is the same thing as saying something's not accurate, right? Uh, same know, objections. It depends on how you're talking about accurate. Uh, but I would say that... Uh, um, no, this a thing like that's very innocent. I can see a lot of people doing it. But again, you're talking about something that's not something that's false. Um, Same object. Well, I didn't have dinner with him, but I could see it being hyperbole. I could see it being something that somebody would say. Okay, but but hyperbole in this context, again, in this context. You might say tonight that we had dinner together. You know. But yeah, it would be false for me to say that you and I had breakfast together this morning, right? Yeah, it's sort of false. It would depend on how you meant it, how you said it, but uh, yeah, it would be false. Is, is there any say way? we sort of had lunch together. <laughs> is there any way I could no, say? No, I, I, think, I, I, think I think it's a statement of hyperbole. It's not the big deal. The big thing is how, how well they taught. Again, I'm focusing on this. It's, these are false statements that Mr. Sex, this is a false statement that these folks had dinner with you when they did not, correct? I think it's hyperbole. That's what I think it is. I think it's, in, you know, I think the important thing is the uh, the level of instruction. I think it's innocent hyperbole. Maybe it's trying to make a point. I don't know. But um, I didn't have dinner with him, but I think it's innocent hyperbole. And okay, this is line seven. And again, you were just following what you were told to say in this recording, right? That Donald Trump had personally picked you. Answer, that's correct. And just to follow up, you've you've never met Trump, right? Answer, no. Question, so it's not true that he picked you. There's an objection. Uh, answer, yeah, it's true. He didn't pick me, no. See that, Mr. Trump? Yeah, well, that's different than what 178 says, right? Because 178, he was... He's saying that because it's Michael uh, Sexton, he's, you know, Michael Sexton was my arm. So, you know, he was saying that Michael Sexton picks me. That's, that's, you know, a similar thing. So it's a very different kind of a uh, um, question you'd be asking me. You agree with me that Michael Sexton doing something is not the same as you personally doing I don't, something, I don't, correct? No, I don't agree with Objection. that. Okay, so if Michael Sexton Time is out. brushing his teeth right now, is that the same thing as you brushing your teeth right now? Time out. It's an um, improper hypothetical. You can answer. Um, Michael Sexton, I assume, picked him. And Michael Sexton's my representative. So, so he assumed that I was hand that he, I picked him. I mean, Michael, Michael Sexton is my rec representative. I don't hire most of the people in the Trump organization, but I hire them through people that work for me. So Michael Sexton was my representative, my personal representative. He picked him. And that's what he said in 78, 178. But he also said you did not personally pick him. Well, the witness said that. Right. And he also said, no, I didn't pick. I, I'm not saying I did pick him. Right. You, you, exactly. That's what I'm getting at. You did not personally pick him, correct? Well, I'm not saying I picked him, I, but Michael Sexton picked him, and Michael Sexton is my arm. But you did not, he said he never met you. You did not meet him, correct? I don't think so, no. Okay. And you did not personally pick him, correct? Uh, you know, I didn't, Mr. No, Goff. I don't think so. Okay, did you authorize Mr. Goff to represent the students that you, Donald Trump, had personally picked him? No, I never met him. Okay. Is that the kind? Is that the level of candor uh, to falsely represent the students that okay. you had personally picked him? Yes. Is that the level of candor you expected from the instructors at Trump University? It assumes facts, not in evidence, is argumentative calls for improper opinion testimony and answer. My representative handpicked him. He was my he was my top executive. Uh, and that's that's all I know. I mean I haven't heard this, but my representative picked him and I assume he because based on what he said in 178, my representative picked him. So that's all I can say. But you agree I didn't pick him myself. But no. you acknowledge though, sir, that it's it is a false statement 
for Mr. Goff to say, Donald Trump personally picked me? Check to the question is calling for improper opinion testimony and um, assumes facts, not in evidence, and misstates the record. You can answer. Well, I guess he's saying I picked him through my representative. I mean, I assume that's what he meant. Well, that's not what he said. He said well, Donald Trump uh, personally picked me. Uh, I'm just objection, telling you an interpretation. That the, his testimony is uh, in the record and speaks for itself, and it goes beyond the one excerpt you identified. And what I'm asking you is, you heard what he represented to the students, that Donald Trump personally picked me. Is that true or false? My representative, my number one, my top person picked him. Okay, not you. No, it wasn't me, but a lot of people would consider that to be an offshoot of me. Um, you weren't Steve Goff's partner, picked, were you? You picked. So I wasn't who? You weren't Steve Goff's partner, were you? No. The question is you, didn't, you didn't talk to Steve Goff all no, the time, did you? I, I didn't speak to Steve Goff, no. But my representative picked him. You had one lawsuit in which you sued somebody for defamation because they said you were worth hundreds of millions of dollars instead of billions. Right? And I did very well in that lawsuit. Unfortunately, I can't prove damages, so that's okay. We Hold on. Win. Let me make sure we're talking about the same lawsuit. This is the lawsuit against Timothy O'Brien yeah. and Warner Books. Yeah. And you, your testimony was you did very well. Yeah, we were doing very well. And frankly, um, the biggest problem with that lawsuit is we couldn't approve damages. No, your testimony you just gave was that you did very well in that lawsuit, right? Yes, you have. Oh, I lost the lawsuit. Okay. But I made a very good point with that lawsuit. So you lost the lawsuit. Yeah, but I'm glad I brought that lawsuit. I made a very good point with that lawsuit. For the full story and all the videos, go to motherjones.com.